Okay, Eric Martin, he's back. This is his um, pre-trial, I think the last settlement conference, for his driver's license issue. So that's where we are in this. He's back uh, in Judge Slavin's. Uh, and as uh, you all know, he just was in court in another county or someplace uh, earlier this week or last week. So anyway, this is the latest on the driver's license issue. And of course, Eric tries to control the, uh, the hearing or the conference. And of course, the judge has to set him straight. So I won't, uh, I won't jump in much in this one because uh, the judge takes care of it pretty much uh, as needed. So y'all just sit back, relax, and enjoy. And thank you for stopping by. Uh, yes, Mr. Martin was here and now he's gone, so. Uh, Mr. Martin was here and now he is not here. Time is out and I'm separate 30. People versus Eric Martin. Good morning, Your Honor. MIDC counsel on behalf of Eric Martin, Josh Hadley, P number 80080. All right. Today was the date and time set for a settlement conference. Mr. Martin had appeared and he signed out and is no longer here. He left the court, the Zoom court. Uh, there's also a uh, motion and demand to replace his current attorney, Joshua Hadley. You would be the second or third attorney, I think, I'm appointed to, Mr. Martin? I can't speak to it, Your Honor, but I do believe that that's correct. I, I, was, um, I know I'm not normally one of your house counsel attorneys. I was reached out and spot appointed on this. I believe I'm successor, maybe third attorney on the, on the case. Right. Judge, he is back in the waiting room now. Oh, wait, wait, he's back in the waiting room now. Here he is. And Your Honor, I was not served a copy of the motion um, to replace me, so I, w I will not stand, obviously, in opposition if that's been filed with the court. Well, it's been filed by Mr. Martin, so I'm, it was, it was handwritten. Um, Mr. Martin, turn your video on, please. I do want to caution you that, uh, as normal, Eric does mumble, and his uh, his audio is really bad, so it's not really me, it's him, so just heads up on that. All right. All right. Yeah, this is uh, People of City of Taylor versus Eric Martin. Uh, today's the date and time set for a settlement conference in this matter. Mr. Martin, you had filed a handwritten motion to replace uh, your attorney, Mr. Hadley. Mr. Hadley is like the second or third attorney that I appointed to you on this driving on a restricted uh, license. Um, and replace him, which will require another. Uh, it says that uh, your attached motion, you'd like to fire the attorney and replace him, which will require another appointed attorney time to get familiar with this case and your defenses. So um, there's nothing wrong with this attorney. Uh, what, what's the problem with this attorney? He's a very highly qualified attorney who I appointed to you. This is a driving on a revoked license. I'm not sure what the, what the issue is here with this attorney. Pointed out in the, in the motion and demand to to uh, get rid of him was uh, replace him was because. Uh, hey, hey, Mr. Get... Martin, hang on. I can't hear anything you're saying because the uh, the tubes behind here. Are... All right, go ahead. Yeah, just as I pointed out in the motion was uh, because he told me that I, would, I can't say nothing during the trial. 
if he talks, I can't talk. Basically, uh, I have to violate my own right to freedom of speech. Yeah. And uh, what was the other reason? Let me refresh my over it again. Okay. And, oh, there's other reason. And plus, he kept talking about several times as we just talked. Not like it was a one time thing, like it normally happens. People don't intend to, you know, like, cause I also had to say, as go to show here, he was doing it intentionally. All right, so, few, uh, so, you're, so you say you want to talk at trial. You have two different options as far as talking at trial. One is you can you have the right to testify on your own behalf if you want to, and no one's going to stop you from testifying on your own behalf. Now, if you're planning on um, doing that, your attorney can ask you questions. Um, and you can also be subject to cross-examination, just letting you know. And you'll be under oath. So any sort of perjury or anything like that, you could be, uh, you know, subject to obviously the penalties of perjury if there was any sort of untruths that were stated by you on the record, on the, on the witness stand. Now, the other way you would be able to speak on your own behalf is if you're representing yourself. So I think what Mr. H Mr. Hadley is talking about is, like uh, if someone asks a question or and he wants to say objection because there's a legal reason to say objection. Um, I don't need both of you to say objection. Just one person can say objection. I think that's what he's, it's going to be confusing if you're going to try to talk over top of your own attorney when it comes to that sort of stuff. If you uh, want to represent yourself, you're more than, you're more than welcome to represent yourself um, and you can talk you can be the attorney, you can say objection and that kind of stuff. Um, but in that situation, I would still have Mr. Hadley there uh, as a standby so that you can ask, uh, you know, legal questions. But there's no reason to, to, uh, to fire Mr. Hadley. He's a very competent attorney and this is a very straightforward case. You either had a license at the time you were driving or you did not have a license at the time that you were driving. And all we have to have is, um, as far as the elements go, we have to have a witness that shows that you were operating a motor vehicle on a, on a public street and you didn't have a license. Those are the elements of the case. Now, I just, uh, sorry to break in here, but this is very important. I want people to, to catch on to that most traffic tickets are just as the judge described them. There's like two elements. And in this case, it was, did he have a driver's license? And was he driving without a driver's license? So there was a law, and he is alleged to have broke it. That's all there is. That's all that has to be proven. So it's very simple, these traffic cases. They try to make them real convoluted, but they're very, very simple. So uh, let's continue. So I don't know who the witnesses are. We haven't heard any testimony, so I'm not going to get into any of that stuff. But I'm pretty sure that Mr. Hadley can handle... Uh, a case like this, or be uh, or be the uh, standby the, there sitting with you in case you have a legal question when it comes when it arises. So um, that's uh, for that reason. I'm going to deny your motion because you have very competent counsel. You requested counsel, and I don't see any legitimate reason to fire this attorney and hire a new one, especially when you stated right in your motion that our attached motion and demand to fire the attorney. And replace them, which will require another appointed attorney time to get familiar. I'm not, I'm not kicking this case down the road again and adjourning it out again, um, just so that we can stall for more time. So there's literally nothing in the elements that Mr. Hadley doesn't isn't aware of. So I'm going to deny your motion now. If you want to represent yourself, I'll have Mr. Hadley be there as your standby attorney, so that you have an attorney that you can ask questions to right in the courtroom, or. Uh, Mr. or Mr. Hadley will be the one who's going to uh, represent you and if you want to testify that's entirely up to you. Your Honor, if I may briefly, um, sure. as Mr. Martin's waived attorney client as to the uh, contents for communication, um, I've never told Mr. Martin that he was not allowed to testify on his own behalf. Uh, for the record's sake, Mr. Martin has proposed that we would have dual opening arguments and dual closing arguments if there was a difference in trial strategy. I've explained to him that the court's not going to entertain tag teaming this uh, proceeding. You know what? I got lessons. If you want to, if you want to say a closing, and he wants to say a closing, sure, go ahead. 
I got no problem. I got, I got, listen, I got no problem. The court is not, the court is very, 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 very astute in the law. And you know what, if you want to talk, you want to do, you want to do an opening argument, you want to do a closing argument for yourself as well. Listen, I'm just going to remind, remind, remind Mr. Martin that you have a right to remain silent and not have any of that silence used against you. But if you want to get up, but if you want to get up and speak, I'm going to caution you right now of what you're not going to do. One, you're not going to testify until you've actually testified. You're not going to talk about things that are not in evidence. So if you're going to be like, hey, I did this or they did this in the opening statement. Now, if you're going to want to say that it's going to like everybody else does in their opening statements here, this trial, the the uh, the evidence will reflect or the evidence will prove X, Y and Z typing, hy talking hypothetically. Sure. But if you plan on not testifying, then you better not testify during your opening or closing statements because you're not subject to cross examination at that point, And that would be unfair for the other side. If you are going to testify about your own opinions, about your own uh, statements of fact that you think happened, you're going to do that on the stand if you want to do that, or you're not going to say it at all. You understand, Mr. Martin? Because that's not fair to the other side. That's like letting you move chess pieces and the other side doesn't get to move any chess pieces. Because there's a whole rhythm, there's a whole flow to it, there's a whole fairness to the whole process. So if you're going to testify during your opening or during your closing statements, then you're going to testify on the stand. But if you're not going to testify in the stand, which is your choice, you have the right to remain silent on that, then you're not going to bring up things that aren't in evidence because your testimony isn't in evidence. So you're not going to sneak it in or slide it in during your opening or closing statements. Do you understand that? Uh, before I answer that question... Mr. Uh, Martin, the answer is yes or no. Do you understand the statement that I just stated? I comprehend it. Okay, um, you comprehend it. Very good. No. So next day, next next uh, next topic is um, we're be uh, everybody's ready to go. That is uh, set for the trial, and uh, we'll see everybody here for trial. I have some objections, and I have to something else to say. Now, I never said that today was uh, Joshua never said testify. He wasn't talking in that. I couldn't speak. He was. It's already. Strictly, it's already been. Sir, you know, it's already been resolved. It's already been resolved. If you want to make an opening statement, you can make an opening statement. If you want to make a closing statement, you can make a closing statement. So yeah, I got no problem with both of you making right. your opening and closing statements. And with regard to testimony, if you want to testify, you can testify. If you want to remain silent, you have that constitutional right to do that too. So right. courts okay. not stop yeah. you from doing any of that. Okay. So. The motion to remove her, the motion to remove Mr. Hadley has been decided. So there's no more need or, need nor discussion for that. I've already made my ruling on that. So that was the that was the point of today. Was the uh, your motion was up for today? We've made a ruling on that motion, and um, we'll see everybody at trial. Have a good rest of your day, sir. I have a motion to make Briefly, I have a motion to trial based on the motion that I filed the case and they have not been ruled on yet. So you say your motion to dismiss? I have several motions to dismiss already filed in this case. That are right, and I already uh, ruled on your motion. I already ruled on your on your motion to dismiss. And if you're just going to refile the same thing, then it's it's still dismissed. You can't just keep filing the same motion to dismiss. One of those same motions. Now I'll go over the motions I'm talking about specifically here. One day okay. on the eleventh. So 19th. we'll hear we'll hear we'll hear any other motions on the day of trial, sir. So be prepared because uh, we'll do okay. hear those we'll hear those in person here uh, and uh, before the trial starts, if the trial starts. Because if your motion is That's successful, then, then we obviously won't start it. But we're not hearing those today. Those weren't scheduled up. Are noticed up to be heard today. Those are going to be heard on the day of trial, so we can do them here in person. And then, uh, if your motion is successful, then we won't have trial. If it uh, if it is not successful, then we will. But that way, everybody will be ready to go on that same day. So we're going to see everybody on the day of trial, and any other motions that you have, we will take care of at that time, Mr. Hadley. Your Honor, one, I would like to get a working phone number for Mr. Martin. I've been unable to reach him for several weeks. 
Mr. Martin, do you have uh, my, I'm going to put you into a breakout room. So, cause I don't want to broadcast your uh, information online. But then second, your okay, chart, on. um, I've been Mr. Martin, today. hang on, Mr. Martin, hang on, Mr. Martin, hang on, Mr. Hadley, what was the second part of your, Thank you, Your Honor. I have not received or been able to get copies of any of the pro se motions that have been filed other than the motion for a hearing to determine nature cause of case. Would it be acceptable to reach out to your staff to get copies of these pro se motions in advance of the trial next week? Yes. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. All right. So, Mr. Martin and Mr. Hadley, I'm going to put the two of you into a uh, breakout room so that you can um, swap uh, information as far as phone number and things like that. So thank you. I still have a verbal motion to make, Joseph. All right, so go ahead and uh, talk with Mr. Hadley in the breakout room, you can sign out from there. Uh, Mr. Fanto, People versus Low. Morning, Your Honor. Jeffrey Fanto on behalf.